Hey folks, hay season 2021 is officially done. So now I've got the baler in the shop and I'm just giving it a little tune up to make sure it's ready to go for the next spring. So what I wanted to do was make a video today on checking all your chain tensions and making sure that they look okay. That's what I'm doing now. So let's go around and check it out. So the first chain we're going to check the tension on is the feeder bar chain. And I'm showing you a picture of it in the manual because you can't really see it with the shield on because it's right there and uh, yeah you can't really see it with the shield on. So uh, the feeder bar chain is properly adjusted when it deflects 5 8 inch midway between the sprockets with a hundred pound uh, force applied. The chain we're looking at is right there and for perspective this is where I'm sitting on the baler. I'll kind of move around to the front too. Right there. So I'm going to zoom in on uh, an adjustment screw you have to loosen from one side and then we'll go over to the other side and check out the screw that actually tightens it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is loosen that nut right there. That requires a three quarter inch sock or a wrench or socket. The next thing we're going to do is come around to the other side and with a 9 16 inch socket we're going to back out on that nut right there or that bolt and what that's going to do is backing out on it is going to tighten up the tensioner sprocket right there and you'll tighten that until you feel uh, enough tension on that chain. Let's check out where I got it right now. So it's pretty good and tight right now um, but that's because I already checked it yesterday so once it's to where you like it then we go around and uh, tighten that nut back up right there and then we have uh, the feeder bar chain tensioned so the next chain is the knotter drive chain and that chain is currently um, I've got it broken apart because I am making adjustments to it. I had to shorten it by one link and it drives uh, the knotter and it goes, let's see if I can get a, it goes clear up into there. I know it's hard to see, but we'll go around to the other side. And then um, it drives off that inside sprocket right there. And you can see that's the top of the chain right there. So this top of the chain is running up to the knotter and then it's hanging down. And the bottom of the chain is right there and it's broke apart. And what I've got is a master link and a half link on it. And I just need to connect that to this and my chain will be at the proper tension of course, this is your idler pulley for that chain. Just sliding that pulley up will get that chain to where you want to. And according to the manual, the knotter drive chain is properly adjusted when it deflects one fourth to three eighths inch with the five pound force applied midway between the drive uh, and driven sprockets. Here's one thing I do do that I can show you is I will take something with a um, this has like kind of different colors on it and I'll set it right there on the chain and I'm trying to demonstrate this with one hand and I'll apply what I think is probably what feels like about a five pound force with my finger and then I go and see where the bottom of that chain moves to and so right there it moved from the bottom of the black to the bottom of the orange there and so that's the pickup drive chain and it's properly adjusted when it deflects 3 8 to half an inch. See how accurate my guess was. So I'm just a little off. That was more like 3 8 an inch. Now I've got the back of the baler open and we're going to check and adjust the feeder bar chain. So the feeder bar chain is this big old chain here, and this is what runs the feeder bar, which is this, and this runs the feeder tines, which pushes them 
takes the hay and pushes it into the plunger. So uh, the book specifies that the feeder bar chain is properly adjusted when it deflects 5 eighths inch midway between the sprockets. So about this point right here uh, with a 100 pound force applied. Now to adjust the feeder bar, you first need to turn the flywheel until your connector link, which is this guy right here, is positioned at either of the two sprockets. So I have it adjusted so it's right underneath the sprocket. And then I go and I check my chain and that looks like, to me it seems pretty loose because look how much that's moving and that's, this is only supposed to move 5 eighths inch uh, with 100 pounds of force. And that, that's just my finger there. So what we got to do to adjust this is loosen this nut and this nut right here. And those require 9 16 inch socket. I actually already pre-loosened them. Loosen that guy. Loosen this guy here. Then we're going to take this socket and this is also a 9 16 inch nut. We're going to adjust this, tighten that up, and it will pull that chain farther together. And you can see as I do it, you can actually see this tighten up. So let's just keep on going. See that how it's getting less already? It's nice and tight right there. I think that will be good. See how it took all that tension out? Let's give it another little shot. There. We could probably get it up 5 eighths inch with 100 pounds. So now what I'm going to do is tighten these down really tight. So it doesn't move on me because I think that's what might have happened is I didn't have this tight enough and it loosened up on me because I already adjusted this a couple days ago. Tighten this one here. Oh, I hurt my arm just doing that. Okay, so now we should have our feeder bar chain nice and tight. So we got all the chains tightened up and now we need to make sure that the needles are still in time with the plunger. So what we do for that is we rotate our flywheel in the direction of travel and in case you didn't know there is an arrow on it that tells you the direction of travel. So rotate the flywheel counterclockwise. The crankshaft is going to rotate around and you rotate the flywheel until the crankshaft is lined up between the two notches right there. I've already done that. Next, you come around to the other side of your baler, and then you have this rod going right here uh, from your brake down to your yoke for the needles. Give that a good yank back, and I've already done it too, so you don't have to watch me do it. It's really difficult to yank back and it uh, will probably take you two hands. And after you've yanked it back, come on over to the other side and just check your clutch dog right here. That clutch dog is going to be resting against the stop on the bottom. And just push against that clutch dog right there. Make sure it's really hard against that clutch stop and uh, you shouldn't be able to push it back. So if everything's in time, you've got your three timing marks right there. You see those three dots there and those three dots there? So if it's in time, those three dots will line up with each other on both sides. If it's not, what you have to do is undo the chain that goes around this one, undo a link on the bottom, and then lift that chain up off here and rotate this until those dots line up 
and then connect your, ch uh, connect your chain on the bottom again. So now we are going to just verify that the timing is still good for the needles when they come up uh, in front of the plunger. So in order for us to do that, what we're gonna do is first trip the knotter. And I'm going to set this right here so you can watch the needles move up. And then I'm going to go up front and I'm gonna start rotating the crank or the flywheel until those needles start to move. Again, I'm rotating it counterclockwise. Right now the plunger is going back. Now the plunger is starting to go forward. And I'm going to lean over and watch until those needles start to come. I'm going to take a wrench and kind of shove it in between the flywheel and the baler so it doesn't slide. And just see if my needles are starting to pop up. So they are. So what you can see here, this I'm really sorry about the light. Right now the needles are just coming up into the bell chamber. And you want the, uh, the front of that needle uh, one quarter to three quarter inch behind the front of the point right there. Uh, on the plunger and I'll show you a diagram in the book here <clears throat> and so that means that our needles are in time because we're looks like we're probably well, we're probably right at about three quarters there so that's perfect just to show you what I did up here I just kind of stick a um, pry bar in between the flywheel and the baler and that just keeps it from from rolling Right here is actually a diagram that shows the specifications for the needle timing. So this is the front of the plunger, those points there. This shows the needle just entering the bell chamber and you want it to be about one quarter to three quarters inch uh, behind the rearmost edge of that, which is right there. And so once again, if we go down and look at my needles, you can see them popping up right there. And dang, it's hard to get good light. And see, they're coming up right after that point. Well, that's all there is to it, folks. I got my chains checked, got them tightened, and uh, got my needle timing set. So I think I'm good to go for the year. I'm going to take her out to the machine shed, back her in, and uh, she will sleep there until the spring. Thanks for watching. Hope this was useful, and I'll see you next time.